Praise the Lord. Our Bible reading shall be taken from Mark chapter 9. We'll be reading from verse 14 to 29. Mark chapter 9 from verse 14 to 29. It reads, And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them, and the scribes questioning with them. And straight away, all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed, and running to him, saluted him. And he asked the scribes, what question ye with them? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a deep, dumb spirit. 18. And whatsoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foments and gnasheth with his teeth, and pinneth away, and I spake to the disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. 19. He answered him and said, O oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straight away the spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. 21. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. And oft times it has cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou cast do anything, have, com have compassion on us and help us. 23. Jesus said unto him, If thou cast believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straight away the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. 25. When Jesus saw the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. 26. And the spirit cried and rent him so and came out of him and he was one dead in so much that many said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. 28. And when he, and when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, what could not we cast him out? Why could not we cast him out? 29, and the last verse. And he said unto them, This kind came forth by nothing, but by prayer and fasting. That's the end of our reading. May the Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. Let's appreciate God for the life of our wonderful choir. You can do better, you can do better. I see them singing with power. I see them singing with power. I see the power of the Holy Spirit manifesting in your lives. Privately and corporately in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Heavenly Father, we commit all that we will do right now into your hands, O oh Lord. Holy Spirit, come and take leadership. Father, let, let us die to the flesh so that your name can be glorified. Hallelujah. Father, take over my faculties. Take over our tongues. Take over our ears. We take authority over every power of the air. In the mighty name of Jesus, we bind and render impotent any power that has come to steal the word from us today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Ah, that aim is too small for somebody who wants power. Yay. Hallelujah.
Now you are going to join me to call on the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Come, 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 Holy Spirit, come. You know it now. Come, 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 Holy Spirit, come. Come, 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 Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. Come, oh, come. Holy Spirit, come. Come, oh. Close your eyes, close your eyes. Come, 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 Holy Spirit, come. We need your power. Come, 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 Holy Spirit, come. Holy, Holy Spirit, come. Come, come, come. Holy Spirit, come. Come, come, come. Come, 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 Holy Spirit, come. Come, come, Holy Spirit, come. Yes, sing it like a minute. Come, 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 Holy Spirit. With the Lord. Amen. Touch me, oh Lord. Touch me, oh Lord. I want you to touch me. Touch me, oh Lord. Touch me, oh Lord. Touch me, oh Lord. I want you to touch me. Touch me. Feel me. Feel me. Feel me. Feel me. So feel me. Touch me, touch me, oh Lord. I want you to heal me, heal me, oh Lord. I want you to feel me, feel me, oh Lord. I want you to heal me, heal me, oh Lord. Let's appreciate Jesus. Jesus, as you take your seat. I want you to touch me, touch me, oh Lord. Beloved, the only language the enemy understands is the language of power. This is the last Sunday of our month of spiritual consciousness. Praise the Lord. Your power consciousness shall increase in the name of Jesus. I say your power consciousness shall increase in the name of Jesus. Because when you have that consciousness of power in your spirit, the power is now resident in your spirit. So that when you speak, you speak with power. That shall be your portion in Jesus' name. Ah, that I mean, it's not like somebody who wants power. I say that shall be your portion in Jesus' name. Yeah. Hallelujah. 
praise the Lord. What is this power that we are talking about? What is this power? Let's take it from the beginning. When I looked into the dictionary, I was told that power is the ability or the capacity to do something or act in a particular way. That is the dictionary. Ability to do something or act in a particular way. Which means if power is not there, you can't act in a particular way. You might not even be able to act the way you want. That is the meaning of that, as I understand it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then there's another meaning. Dictionary. This is just the dictionary. It said the capacity the ab or the ability to direct or influence behavior of others or the course of events. Praise the Lord. He said the ability to direct or influence the behavior of others. <laughs> so somebody else can influence, he can even direct the behavior of another person. That is deep. So I may not want to behave in a particular way. And another person who has power can make me behave in that way. So which means if I have power, I don't have to behave the way another person behaves, uh, wants me to behave. I must have power to be able to resist. Is that not so? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I want you to put that in your pocket. Then the third understanding I got from the dictionary was, it said it physical strength or force exacted by something or someone. That is also power. Praise the Lord. Mind you, we have not talked about spiritual power. This is dictionary telling us about power. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So what is spiritual power? After doing a deep research into it, I realized that only the Bible can define what spiritual power is. Praise the Lord. So what is spiritual power? To start with, only God has the ultimate power. Psalm 62. Only God has the ultimate power. You see, twice have I heard that all power belongs to who? Hallelujah. And therefore, God is the ultimate source of spiritual power. Praise the Lord. In your time, you can go and look at Hebrew chapter 4, verse 12. Where it talks about the word of God. is powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. There are deeper meanings to that. It can even separate the, the joint from the marrow. Hey, hey. Hallelujah. That is God's power. So, let's look at the definition of spiritual power. Biblical definition of spiritual power. It says the fullness of Christ dwelling in you. The fullness of Christ dwelling in you. That is spiritual power. Praise the Lord. Colossians chapter 2 verse 9 to 10. Let us be quick because I want to make sure I finish this ministration and don't stop halfway because of time. Colossians 2, 9 to 10. It says, for, he, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. What's the meaning of that? In Jesus dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. That is when Jesus was alive on earth like me and you. The fullness of the Godhead was in him. Praise the Lord. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. You, the fullness of Godhead, of the Godhead, dwell in you. God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, and Jesus, they dwell in you. That is spiritual power. Praise the Lord. What is spiritual power? 
He says the ability to remain unpolluted in this present world. The ability to remain unpolluted in this present world. Praise the Lord. The Bible says that we are in this world, but we are not of this world. The ability to remain unpolluted. Hebrew 12. Let's look at Hebrew 12. Excuse me. Hebrew 12 verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Amen? Let us lay aside every weight, every weight, and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with what? Patience. The race that is set before us. Praise the Lord. He says, sin that so easily beset us. And we are compassed by so great a witness. Who are these witnesses? The world is looking at you. For you to remain the same. To remain who you are in Christ. That is power. That is spiritual power. Without that spiritual power, you cannot be who you are in Christ. Praise the Lord. So the fact that you are still who you are in Christ means that you possess spiritual power. Praise the Lord. You know what we are trying to do here is to give understanding. Because with understanding, you can perform. You can perform. How many of us here have ever stood and said, according to the word of the Lord, so shall it be. You must have the confidence that the Lord is with you for you to do that. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. What is spiritual power? It is having access to the secrets and mysteries of God by which obstacles can be removed. Having access to the mysteries and secrets of God. So, our Papa in heaven, he has mysteries and secrets. Let's find out from the Bible. Amos 3 verse 7. Amos 3 verse 7. I can read it out. I have it here. It says, surely the Lord God will do nothing but he will reveal it. But he revealed his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Praise the Lord. He said, God will not do anything until he has told his prophet what he's doing. Amen? Amen. So we are not talking about people who have the title of prophet here. Amen? Amen? As a child of God, you operate in the prophetic ministry as well. Moses said, I wish that they are all prophets. Who know about that story? When the prophets were prophesying. And then other people, the spirit of, the, of prophecy came into other people who were hanging around there. Abby? And somebody came to report to, 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 to Moses. He said, there are some people who are not prophets. They are prophesying, you know. And Moses said, ah, ah. that is what it's supposed to be. I wish they were all prophets. So you must have access. Even as we are standing here, some people know what will happen 20 years ahead, 10 years ahead. But whether God has told them to reveal it is another matter. So, but if you have the secret, if you hear from God, you will know how to operate in a circumstance. You will not be blind. You will hear from God in Jesus' name. I say you will hear goodness from, from God in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What is spiritual power? Ability to be silent in the, praise, in the face of provocation. 
Ah, so you were thinking that when I say spiritual power, it's only when you can turn uh, wine to water to wine. No, 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 no. There's a lot to it. The Bible has a clear definition, multiple definition of what spiritual power is. It's the ability to remain silent in the face of provocation. Isaiah 53 verse 7, very quickly. Isaiah 53 verse 7, very quickly. We need to move very fast. He said he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He, he is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her sharers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. Who was that? Who was that? Somebody came, slapped him. Bah! And he didn't say anything. They did everything to him. He kept quiet. Some people say, ah, ah, you slapped me. Oh. Ah, this wasn't part of the bargain, oh God. Oh. You didn't say when I come for this uh, crucifixion that uh, they will slap me, they will spit on me. Oh. He didn't say that. He kept quiet. The son of man go away that is written. Those are the things that represent destiny diversion. Your destiny will not be diverted by events in the journey of your salvation. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let me hear a good amen. Come on. What is spiritual power? He said the ability to keep your flesh under control. Spiritual power. Ability, to, you, by the time we finish, you will know where you are. You will know whether you have to increase or remain where you are. Or there is nothing and you need to get something. Ability to keep your, fre- your flesh under control. Praise the Lord. Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 9.27. 1 Corinthians 9.27. Let's move very fast. He said, but I keep under my body and bring it, I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. He's talking about Christians like me and you. It's not that we are not Christians. It's not, it's not that we are not doing what God said we should do. But what Paul is saying here is that we need extra discipline to remain on course. You know, I tell people, nobody can correct Jesus. Jesus said in the end time, he said wickedness will increase. He said deceit, will, fake pastors everywhere. He said even the saints, he said if even the saints self, they will begin to look as if they are going to be deceived. Though. But because of that, he will come sooner. Just to avoid that. That's to tell you how bad it is. These are the end times. There's wickedness everywhere. Praise the Lord. We need to be disciplined. We need to manage our flesh. You know the works of the flesh. Galatians 5, 19. Praise the Lord. But the works of the flesh are what? Drunkenness. So many things. Don't look at the extremo. Look at the subtle, subtle, subtle ones. Praise the Lord. The little foxes. No little fox will come and play in the garden of your life in the name of Jesus. I say any little fox that will come and play in the garden of your life, let fire consume them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. What is spiritual power? The ability to move in supernatural gifts. The ability to move in supernatural gifts. You need to find You need to ask God for a gift with which to minister. You need a gift. Praise the Lord. I don't want to read anything, but it will take us time. I will read this one. You don't have to. Okay, put it on the board. Put it on the board. First um, First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 to 11. Ability to move in the supernatural gifts. Is it there? First Corinthians 12, 4 to 11. Verse 4 says, Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirits. Go ahead. And there are differences of administrations. You hear that? Differences of what? 
differences are of what? So if you are the church bookkeeper, doesn't mean that you don't have spiritual gifts. Some are not visible, but they are gifts, and you are meant to operate your ministries with that. Amen? Amen. Next, next, six. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. Next one. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with her. For to one it is given by the Spirit the word of what? To another the word of knowledge. The same Spirit again. Number 9, verse 9. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another what? The gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another what? The working of miracles. To another what? Prophecy. To another what? The signing of the Spirit. To another? Diverse kinds of tongues. To another? The interpretation of tongues. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Eleven and the last one. He said, But all this work at that one and the self same Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Praise the Lord. You are going to go home and meditate today. Which one is my gift? And you're going to ask the Lord, Father, give me my own, my own, that I will run my ministry with. Running your own ministry doesn't mean that you have a church. It is where God has placed you in the church. Praise the Lord. I say you will get your own gift. And if you have it already, that power, the power, you will increase in that power. I say you will, hey, some people don't even want to increase. In the, this kind of ministration, you don't fall asleep in it. Oh. We have, it's a power ministration. You want power now, Abby? Yeah. Uh, you will get power in Jesus' name. Yeah. The Lord that giveth, the Holy Spirit that distributed gifts, he will grant you mighty power in, in Jesus' name. Yeah. The power that will announce you. I say the power that will announce you. Yeah. Receive it now. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. And the last one. Hmm. What is spiritual power? Spiritual power is being truly broken. That's the last one. I don't want to go beyond that. Look, spiritual power is truly being truly broken. How many gifted men of God have I seen? I've even worked with some. And they, you know, because they were not broken. Just, just because they were not broken, pride came and they fell. Anointed men of God. Because they were not broken. Sometimes back, I remember I, I taught brokenness, isn't it? But that was just a tip of the iceberg. Brokenness is a deep topic that every, every child of God who wants to make heaven must meditate on. Because there's brokenness and marriage, brokenness and relationship, brokenness in the church, broken. It's, a, it's multifaceted. You need to go and understand what brokenness is. Because the only, prof, the only thing that can happen after that is that you will power. Power. Brokenness. Who is more broken than Jesus? They slap him, he stands there, we're looking. The Bible tells us that he didn't say anything. Because he's broken, he's humble, there's no pride. If pride was to come and take over at that time, he could have called a thousand angels to finish them off. Is that not possible? Oh, yes. But he had his eyes focused in heaven. Tell your neighbor, focus your eyes in heaven. Focus your eyes on heaven. And God will bless you in Jesus' name. Okay, now, that is the definition, isn't it? You cannot divine, define spiritual power more than the Bible. As it applies to the believer. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So, but what happens when there is no power? Hey! What happens when there is no power? Let's go to our text. I will read our text from verse 14. Mark 9 from verse 14. I will read it. He said, and when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them, and the scribes questioning them. And straight away, all the people, when they... When they when they beheld him, we were greatly amazed. 
And running to him, they saluted him. And he asked the scribes, what question ye with them? Because you know the Pharisees and the scribes, they keep questioning, looking for force, looking for mistake with the disciples. They were doing that. And Jesus came. Say, what, what, are they, what questions are they asking? Verse 17. And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which had a dumb spirit. He said, and wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him. Look, believer, you need power. Say, I need power. I need power. Say, Lord, I need power. Tell your God. Lord, my father in heaven, I need power. He said, wherever I take him, he teareth him. I said, and he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth and pinneth away. Huh. And I spake to thy disciples. Hear that? He said, I spake to thy disciples. Because they have been hearing now. They say, ah, Matthew is, is Jesus' disciple. Oh. Have you heard? Ah, bra, bra, he goes to ISPCU. ISPCU. He goes to that church. I hear they pray. They pray where and they pray. They say, Philip, ah, he's, a, he's, a, he's a disciple of God, of Jesus. So I saw him with Jesus. Let's take this problem to him. What happens when there is no power? <laughs> he said, I speak, and I speak to, the disciple, to thy disciples. He was telling Jesus, I speak to thy disciples, your disciples, <laughs> that they should cast out, and they what? They could not. Verse 19, he answered him and said, Oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him to me. I want to ask everybody this question. Was Jesus happy when he heard what happened? Ah, that noise is too even quiet. No. Was Jesus happy when he heard of what happened? No. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. They could not de demonstrate power. So what happens when there is no power? Embarrassment. Hmm. Embarrassment. Disappointment. Shame. Hmm. Remember the sons of Skiva? They wanted to demonstrate power that they didn't have. Hmm. They, did not, they did not fulfill the conditionality of the definitions that we had just now. They didn't fulfill it. They wanted to demonstrate power. What happened? Shame. Beating. They nicked them that day. But you are a child of God. That shall not be your portion. I said, that shall not be your portion. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. So, when there is no power, all the people that God has put before, brought to this world for you to, deal, to administer and deal, cause deliverance in their life, they will be in affliction. They will remain in affliction. I'm telling you. If a believer has no power, and God has assigned healing through him to another person, and that believer is taking life, is an unserious believer, the persons will remain in, in that affliction. None of us want on that day when we get there, God will, God will say, you were supposed to, through your ministration, deliver 50 people. What happened? They are still in, they are in hell because you didn't demonstrate my power and I gave it to you. That shall not be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, very quickly because now we have to move quickly. I just want to give us some facts about power, spiritual power. Power is operated by the anointing. Amen? Isaiah 10, 27. Power is operated by the anointing. And then, there's difference between power and authority. Authority is given to every Christian without measure. Did you get that statement? Every Christian has the authority without measure. Luke 10, 19. He said, behold, I give you the power. But when you study that very Luke 10, 19, to tread upon serpents and everything, is the authority that was given to me. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, all Christians have power, authority without measure. But power is given according to how you deny yourself. Praise the Lord. Power is given according to how you deny yourself. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 
power is given according to how you what? I want you to pick that. Galatians 2.20. Even though time is good, let me read that one. It's very important. Galatians 2.20, very quickly. He said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who I love, who, who loved me and gave himself for me. The life who I now live, I live by the life of the Son of God. I crucify my body daily, morning, afternoon, evening. Did Paul demonstrate power? Look at the secret. Power is given to the measure by which you deny yourself. If you love too much Pandediam, you will not be able to get power. I'm telling you the truth. And it's what the Bible is saying here. That's why Paul, Paul, Paul denied himself. Sometimes he will not even see food to eat. Sometimes Koboko, they are flogging him. Sometimes it's prison. But he didn't think of the joy of life, of riches, and all those things. He could have gone for those things. He didn't think of it. That's why he was able to remain on course. Praise the Lord. Now I'm going to give you three keys of spiritual power. No, before we go there, let us talk of one thing that can cause hindrance to higher spiritual power. One point only I will give you is secret sin. There's sin, you know, I can see you can see me walking into error. You say, ah, Pastor Henry, come, 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 come. There's something you're doing I don't like. And then I'll hear, I say, Oh, I'm sorry. But I have mercy upon me because you call my attention. But the sin that is secret, nobody can see it. And you cannot tell anybody. And yet that sin is pulling down your prayer life, your ministry life, is pulling, it's affecting all aspects of your life. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Okay, let's progress very quickly. Because we must finish at the right time. Three keys of spiritual power. How do I get from where I am to where God wants me to be? That's our closing. How do I get from where I am to where God wants me to be? To where I'll be demonstrating power. Like Paul and Silas. Like Peter. They say when Peter is passing, his shadow only. Hey! We must go back to the early Christianity. Tell your neighbor, we must go back. We must go back. These are the end times. If they don't see signs and wonders, they will not believe you. Amen. And the Bible says signs and wonders shall follow them that do what? They believe. Okay, let's see the three keys that we are talking about. Mark 9 22 to 24. Very quickly. We are talking about three keys. We want to finish. We only have six, five minutes now. He said, and often time, that's our Bible reading, you know, it had cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou can do anything, have compassion of us and help us. Next one, 23. Jesus said to him, listen to that, oh, if thou can what? number one. If that can believe all things. Look, that means when you ordered that situation to change, your faith, your faith level was not deep enough. That's why I did not move. So you will ask God for faith. Father Lord, receive, release a double measure of faith into your, the children of your life. Your, your children. Release a double. That enemy is too small. Amen. Oh Lord my Father, release a double measure of faith into the life of your children. In the name of Jesus. That's key number one. Let's look at the other two keys. He said, if that can believe, all things are possible to him that believe. That's one. Eh? And straight away, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. So Jesus is able to heal our unbelief. Amen? So if you need that double measure of faith, it's Jesus you will ask, oh, Father, Lord, if it's that is your only prayer point, and you wake up at midnight, and for the next one while you say, Oh Lord, increase my faith, increase my faith, by your power, with your fire, by your fire, with your, and you are fasting. You will be tired physically, but when you come out of it, something would have happened. Amen. I just told you a secret now in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Now, the other two. Mark 9, 28 to 29. 28. Mark 9, 28. He said, and when he was come into the house, hear this, oh. His disciples came to him and asked. They reduced their voice because they have been ashamed. Master. Master. They asked him what? Privately. Why could we not cast him out? Why? And what did Jesus say? 29, 29, quick. He said, and he said unto them, this kind can come forth by nothing, but by what? But by what? But by what? So some can come ordinarily. You can even praise God. There are times. Ecclesiastes, the book of Ecclesiastes makes us to understand that there are times and seasons to everything. There are times when you have to praise God and the wall of Jericho will come down. But there are situations where you need to pray and fast. Not that kind of our fasting that we do that as we are fasting, we are looking at the bull of Pandedia and waiting for the time to reach so that we can rush into it quickly. Not that type of fasting where you deny yourself. And you say, Lord, if I die, I die. If I survive, I survive. God will answer you. I say, God will answer you in Jesus' name. Amen. What did Hannah do? Hannah said, even this child that I'm so desperate for, that every year I'm coming here to pray, and it's not happening. Father, if you even give me this child, I give him back to you. Do you know what that means? That thing that you so much need. Now God, will, you are saying if God give it to you, even you give it back to God. She made that sacrifice, and what happened? Many children came after that Samuel. Samuel didn't stay with her, but children. She was she was just giving birth, like an Hebrew woman. Before you know, another one don't come. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. After today, power shall be in your life. I hope you got the three keys. Oh, after today. You are going to the next level. I know there's power in your life already, but you are going to the higher level. Amen. I say, you are going to the higher level. Amen. Do you even believe? I say, you are going to the higher level. Amen. Stand up and let's pray. Say, power, power. to enter into my next level. Locate and fall upon me now. Ah, pray, 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 pray. Look it, follow up on me now. 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 Oh, look it, follow up on me now. Look it, follow up on me now. Now, 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 in the name. Jesus, let me hear it loud. Amen. In the name of Jesus, sevenfold. Amen. In the name of Jesus, where to go? Amen. 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 Let's begin to appreciate the Lord. Let's begin to appreciate the Lord. You can do better. You can do better. After today, your life has changed. Your power level has changed. If you lay your hands on the sick, they shall recover. If you prophesy in the name of the Lord, it shall come to pass. If you bind anything on earth, it shall be bound. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's appreciate Jesus.